The Sunera Foundation has been working with differently abled children of Sri Lanka for the past 20 years. In these 20 years, it has given these children dignity, value, self-respect, self-esteem, and more than that, confident in themselves to be a part of the world at large and us at large. The book I have in my hand, Wings, the Sunera Story, is a beautiful pictorial essay of this journey of 20 years. Pictures, stories, performances, the trainers, the parents, the caregivers, all of them. Sunetra Bandaranaika, as chairperson of the Sunera Foundation, who and what and how did you give birth to this baby 20 years ago? Well, it's a strange story. At that time, I knew nothing at all about people who are differently abled, nor was I interested. I had a very dear friend called Wolfgang Stanger, German, living in England, who had been for many years working with differently able young people in the performing arts. And he thought that I might be interested to see what they're doing. So one morning, on a Sunday morning, it was a very rainy day, there was a workshop happening near my house. And he said, why don't you come and watch? Well, I really couldn't be bothered. But because he... Rain. Exactly, he was such a good friend. I said, okay, I'll come for five minutes. And I walked into this large hall. There were about 20 young people, males and females, with different types of disabilities, in wheelchairs, with crutches, and so on. And they were doing a workshop, having a wonderful time, laughing, playing, playing music. So I, who went there for five minutes, sat there till the entire workshop finished and bought them all lunch and said, thank you very much. Then Wolfgang Stanger told me much later, he knew that I was hooked. And so I was. That's how I got involved. That's how I was first introduced to this. So this book, Wings, it talks of uh, 37 workshops. It talks of 39 trainers, about 5,000 participants, about 250 performances, all in 20 years. Now, that's an amazing track record. Actually, it is. I can hardly believe we've done it. But the key to it is this is a major challenge, undoubtedly. Now, either you take up the challenge and move forward, or you don't take up the challenge and you move away. Now, I decided to take up the challenge. Now, having taken that decision, I had to have a team of people who were going to work with me. So, we, first of all, started training young people in the country of all ethnic groups. We carried an advertisement in the newspapers, many people applied. Then Wolfgang and Rohana Deva, his partner here, started training them. Others came from England. This was all funded by the British Council and we trained them. Then the journey really started at that point. The trainers were the ones who were going to work with these young disabled people in the workshops. And then gradually, we very slowly we didn't have any funds. We were raising funds and starting to work. Then Wolfgang Stanger said, let's do a stage performance. I said, what? He said, yes, why not? Tell me what has to be done. So he said, I want a cast of people who have been born with disabilities, young soldiers who have been disabled in the war, young people in the North and the East who have been dislocated and displaced in the war and moving from place to place with just the, whatever they are wearing and nothing more than that. I want all of them in the country. I said, that's a very tall order. But I said, oops, you can do it. So I said to myself, okay, I'll do it. So to cut a long story short, we got all these people together and they were rehearsing for about six to eight weeks in one place and the production was based 
on. They had, didn't have a written script. Every day they were discussing how the play should move forward. And into that discussion came the soldiers and those who have been displaced. Even some of the dis uh, differently able people who came and gave their idea. No, that's not going to work, they said. This oh. might work better. So the whole concept is the result of collective team effort. Team effort. Absolutely. And that's what made it work. Because how would Wolfgang know what people suffer in the war? Exactly. What they were suffering here? What a soldier felt when he was blasted and found himself in the hospital? Only they could tell the stories and they did tell the stories and they were all woven into the production. It was such a beautiful tapestry, I must say, of people who suffered in the war, people who grew apart from each other in the war, people had no hope for themselves. They were telling their story. I'd like to quote from the book's foreword by Alison Skilbeck, and I quote, Mothers and carers sang one song. Sunera gives their children confidence and self-belief through discovering and using their voices through movement, drama and art. They learn to work and play with others, to be themselves and also to be part of a community. Now, how did you find these differently able children from various parts of Sri Lanka to be part of this well, journey? What we did was, we picked a place. Say Anuradhapur, for example. We went to meet the local government authorities there. People who had lists of families with a member who's differently able. Sometimes there are more than one in a family. More than one child. And we communicated with them with the support of the local government authorities. And we told them, this is what we are doing. Come. One day we picked a place, invited them to bring the children and come. And they came because they, were, they had no clue as to what this was all about, but they were curious. So they came and our trainers did a model workshop, right? And said, look, we are going to have workshops on these days, following days of the week, in such and such places, we want you to come. And they all came. They brought their children, travelled by bus, sometimes a fair distance, and we didn't pay them anything for their transport. And they sat there, all the mothers were there, and then our trainers started. That's what we did in every single place that we wanted to work in. There are many places right now where we haven't worked in, but but yes. a lot of places in the book, I, I just saw that. Yes. Yeah. Now, that brings us to the Sunera method. Exercise, art, dance, drama, music and yoga. All this in one? All of it in one. A workshop is three to three and a half hours long with a little tea break in the middle. We start off by doing physical exercises and voice exercises. To use their voice, throw it out and then physical exercises, movement, stretching out on the floor, standing up, uh, running around, all of that, to warm them up, that's the idea. Then gradually, we start playing quiet music and they do things, movements, dance movements, the quiet Self-expression? Self-expression, exactly. Then gradually, we pick pieces of music that are fast. Music that they may have heard at home on television. Hindi music, English music, which is fast paced. So then they start dancing, singing and other movements they do, uh, what the trainers have shown them. And then they do some drama. The trainers say, now what would you like to do today? Would you like to play the role of animals in a jungle? No, we don't. Then what would you like? Rowing a boat in the water, going fishing. Yes, we'd like to do that. So, little pieces of drama are done by them in small groups. We break them up into groups. And each group discusses what they want to do. 
So one group does their thing, the other group does their thing, another one does their thing. They are laughing at them because they think that's okay. hopeless <laughs> or they think they are competing with us. That kind of thing. So such fun they have. And yoga comes towards the very end. Now they have exerted themselves, they are happy. Now we have to wind them down before they go home. Otherwise, they are all hyped, charged. And they get highly charged. Yes, and the mother is, finds it very difficult to handle them yes. then. So, yoga, they sit. We had a yoga teacher who came many times and taught yoga to our trainers. And the trainers have introduced certain yoga exercises to the children, what they can do. Some can do more than others, so fine. We do yoga. And finally, they stretch out on the ground lie down on the ground and they are told to keep their eyes shut and be like that for about two minutes. Not a sound. Then it finishes and everybody says thank you in all three languages. When they come to the workshop, they say hello in all the languages that are in this country, Sinhala, Tamil, uh, Muslim, all of that. And uh, the parents take them away. And this happens one day of the week. We can't do it more often than that because the kids' parents are busy, mothers have things to do at home, they sometimes take the kids to something else. So one day of the week, a fixed day, a fixed time, they come. And I have to mention this, during the lockdown periods, recent lockdown periods, we couldn't do our workshops. The kids were going completely berserk. They were hitting their mothers, screaming, shouting when the day came. Today Please. is Monday, we want to go, let's go to the workshops, why can't we go? It was a nightmare for the mothers. So the mothers were trying to keep them occupied. So we got a bright idea. We bought lots and lots of children's storybooks. We have a lot of beautiful children's stories in this country, mostly in Singhala. We and illustrated, beautifully illustrated and we bought huge quantities of books and my English friends sent the money to fund that project and we packed them. Each child got a pack of four books. Lovely. Each child. Our van went all over the country and distributed. And my God, you must see the photographs that we have got after that. The mothers are reading the stories, children are looking at the books. One child takes the books and goes to sleep in the night. Some children want to act as characters in the book, like Mahadana Mutta and the characters who were around him, things like that. And this kept them going. And thank goodness, we have been told we can start our workshops. So we are starting again next week. This book also pays tribute to all those trainers of the foundation without whom uh, this work might not have been possible. Who are these people? Great patience they would need to work with these children. These young men and women are from the rural areas, most of them. They came to us when we opened our arms and said, please come and help us to work. Some, in some cases, the mothers and fathers didn't want them to work with disabled children. You know, there's social stigma there and superstition. They came and we gave them training. And even now, continuously, we are giving them new inputs, upgrading them. And they work in the workshops and they come. Whenever they have to come on fixed days, they come. There are three or four trainers per workshop. They work together in harmony. They love the children. They really care for them. They are totally committed. They never, never complain. And I always say, if not for the trainers, there will be no Sunera. So we greatly appreciate what they are doing. Talking of 20 years, your journey must surely have had a lots of ups and there were downs also, challenges. Share a few of them with us. Well, there have been many challenges along the 20 year journey, but one major challenge, more than any other challenge was when Rohana Deva and Wolfgang Stanger had problems with each other which developed into a very big issue and they both left 
सुनेगा We were stranded, kept dangling. Now, what am I to do? I said to myself, "Look, either you give up and go into a corner and weep, or you say no. I am going to take this forward." That's what I did. That's what you get the money. That is, thank you. And uh, our train, our our trustees. Were very much on board with me at that time. They said, "Yes, Sunara cannot be allowed to sit." So we got together. We got our trainers. We didn't have as many trainers then as we have now, and told them, "Come on, boys and girls, we are moving forward." They clapped, and some of them cried. They said, "We did. We thought you would close shop." So happy to hear you're going forward. So I knew the battle was won at that point. Then it was a matter of. lot of organizing raising funds planning where we should do the workshops what should the workshop what the format of the workshop should be and so on and so forth and we have been moving and moving from that time expanding our work to other areas so now we have 38 workshops and new inputs into the workshops we are even doing dramas where the mothers and fathers perform and the children watch from the audience they are thrilled to beats they scream they shout they clap and the mothers and fathers to have turned out to be brilliant performers they are better actors some of them than some of the stage actors i have seen really this is the truth so that gives them joy as well and they go back and laugh at the mother laugh at the father so so we want to make sure that the kids are really happy so are the mothers and fathers they are also joyous that is what it's all about wonderful indeed i'd now like to once again quote from a line from uh, alison skilbeck's forward in this beautiful book that takes you on a journey a photographic essay of 20 years of the work done by the foundation across the geographies of sri lanka the sunera foundation moves participants from the dark back room to the sunlit porch providing them a sanctified spot where they are free from ridicule prejudice or judgment and carers and families are involved right throughout so that throughout 20 years behind you what lies ahead well what i would really love to see is this country playing a much bigger role the people in this country particularly people who have funds who and who have influence playing a much bigger role in the lives of people who are differently able we have well over a million i don't know a head count i don't want to uh, talk to, about them as if they are only statistics on a piece of paper they are not but what i'm trying to say is there is a large number of them and i'm sorry to say life is not bright for them no government has paid any serious attention to them hardly anything worth talking of a couple of private sector companies have come in in the last few years they are doing a lot of work there are one or two other organizations than ours what i would really like to see is these organizations including us coming together discussing what each one's strengths are and pooling our resources talking to the government of the day and see how they can be brought into the picture along with us to give them whatever they need it could be education for some uh, accessibility in public places for some some financial support for their families and and more than anything else acceptance by society of these people as alison skilbeck said in her forward from the dark back room to the sunlit porch that requires all of us to pool our resources organizations like ours can do only so much and no more because we don't get funding enough and it's not possible 
and I don't see why all of us shouldn't join forces. We all live in this country. We all enjoy the benefits of being Sri Lankans. Why don't we share those benefits with those children? Let them feel that they are part of us. They are equal to us. That is what I want to see into the future and I am going to start working on it. I wanted to bring out the book and I wanted to talk to people about what the book says. The book tells the whole story. It's a beautiful book worth having in all your homes. It really is. And I want to tap into whoever is around who's prepared to join with us. Each one can do what they are doing. We are not going to tread on anybody's corns. But it's a collective effort that will succeed into the future. As Sri Lankans, thank you so much. Great pleasure as always talking to you. And I think it's our first ever chat on the screen. Yes, the first ever chat on the screen. Uh, blessings to you and your team and the foundation as you journey on. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much appreciated.